previously on the Money Matters series. I know where they have left. Oh, the friends my savings. Oh, so that's where you put yourself. Oh, that's that's yeah. the, that's a reality that's check a right there. That's exactly what it is. Um, I talk about it all the time that like, you know you're the one waking up in the morning, you're going to work, you're commuting. You're sometimes working with people that you don't even like. You know. <laughs> I studied financial economics in uni. Same. Um, <laughs> I feel like it was great, but it just doesn't teach the real, real, life. real, real essence <laughs> of like. I learned so many derivatives and yeah, formulas. That was exactly. it. and his expertise on investing i think this is where a lot of people are like this is where i'm going to make loads of money because savings has limitations mm -hmm. in the amount of interest rate we know that the uk's interest rate is, has never been that great to be fair in terms of no, savings um but there's loads of ways you can do that in terms of ices and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff actually we're going to come back to natalie on that when we're talking about budgeting but yeah follow tell us about how we can invest our money and is there a limit to our investments do we have to earn a certain amount to be able to start investing no you can start investing like from one pound like literally because I always say it's a, it's a common saying but not a lot of people have heard it nobody ever got rich by by saving <laughs> it's, it's literally impossible do you know what I mean like you can't get rich by saving so all it is is you have to it's all about capital allocation and what capital mm. allocation is is like you mentioned everyone knows what's coming in no one knows what's going out yeah so you need to allocate what you have properly so if you're unless you're going to be unless if you don't then you're going to be stuck in the matrix that you're in so if you're getting two thousand pound a month and you're spending one thousand pound on your bills, mm. five hundred pound on your wants, um, three hundred pound on your travel, two hundred pound on your food, or what? Do you know what I mean? So your money's done then. Your there's money's no investment there's, there's money. No investment, there's no investment. There's no savings. <laughs> so you need to find a way. Obviously, it's all, you know, personal. Do you know what I mean? I can't go out and tell people like exactly what. How much to put money? Yeah. But you have to allocate what you do have. The people that are self-made. A lot of people were born with silver spoons, but a lot of people that were self-made, all they did was just allocate what they did have correctly. So. You need, to, you need to set a target for yourself where every month, no matter what, you are going to put a portion of what you've earned into investments. And savings is important, but the things of all the things that I just spoke about, mm. the food, travel, they, those go up every single year. And that's they unavoidable. Do. They do. That's yep. unavoidable. So if you're not put and financial assets always mm. do better than cash over yeah, the long 100%. run. So if you're yes. saving, that's great. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. But what you need to do is invest. Because as you invest, like I just said, financial assets do better than cash over the long run. So if, you've, if you invest a portion of your income every single month mm. and you do that over the period of a, of a certain amount of time, mm. there's, no, there's no limit to the time yeah. you can invest. It's ongoing. Yeah, your money is working for you. It's growing in the background. You're spending less than you earn whilst the money that you are investing is, is, is earning for you. Mm -hmm. So over time, you get into this situation. That becomes cumulative. It, it, it's yeah. accumulation. Yeah. That's what yeah. it is. That's, that's, the, that's my favorite word, just accumulate. So um, over time, you're able to then look back at your, your you just oh, my investment portfolio has grown to X amount. So um, the key thing that you both talk about is allocation. So allocation, that key thing. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And again, the allocation will be personal to you based on where you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but okay, so now with allocate, so let me say I've allocated 20% of my earnings towards investment. Mm -hmm. What do I invest in? Okay, so for me personally, um, I'll just give you a bit of insight into my investment strategy. So I invest, um, my investments is sort of my savings in, in a weird sort of way. So instead of saving my money in pounds, I save my money in gold. I save my money in silver. And the reason why I do that is because all you've got to do is just go look, go look at the data, the charts. Mm. Those things have they always, they've maintained their purchase power. They depreciate like that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, even if they do take a little, you know, when, when oh. COVID happened, um, gold and silver both crashed. Yeah, 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 They've yeah. already recovered. Yeah. The pound hasn't recovered. Do you know yep. what I mean? It's still buying you. It's now buying you less goods than it was buying you just even a couple of months ago. Mm. That's just I mean? even the financial terms of it in mm. the economic strategy. It's just the fact that mm. your money would depreciate in the, mm -hmm. its value. Oh, a pound last year is not the same as no, a pound this year. Exactly. And gold about 20, 30 years ago, um, I don't have the exact figures with me, but... Um, there was a time where you could get an ounce of gold for like 300 pounds or something. So, and now an ounce of gold is probably like about 1,500 pounds. So that just goes to show you that ounce of gold is the same size. It's the same size, it hasn't changed. But it's taken more pound notes to buy that, that, same, one, yeah. that same ounce. So that shows you 
But instead of saving in, in currencies... We Maybe you save, save in other things. Yeah, we, we do need to, have, we need to have an emergency fund, first of all. We need to have yeah. an emergency fund, um, have savings for you know, some unexpected um, dramas. But we need to save in, I call it, hard money. So mm -hmm. money, it's, it's going to get you onto the other side because it's going to carry... It's, gonna, it's, like, it's like a river stream. The boat just carry, it, it, it goes with you. And reality you know I mean? is if you needed to like, liquidize it, you, you can. You can liquidate yeah. it. It's not like people think they, when they put their money in gold and silver, how am I going to be able to sell? Those are some of the most liquid markets in the world. Yeah. You can go anywhere in the world and sell your gold and silver. You can't take your 500 shares of Snapchat, <laughs> a Snapchat company that doesn't even make any money. <laughs> You can't, you can't go to, you, you can't go anywhere and you can't go to a you part of the world. And be like, I want money for this. You can't, but if you take your gold and silver, anyone is going to accept uh, mm. gold and silver anywhere you go. Um, you know, so that just goes to show you what's really valuable in this world. So your investment portfolio clearly has a big, has a big impact on how you can actually accumulate money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're obviously saying the hard currency is what you called it. Yeah, yeah. Having like gold and silver. What else it will be a good thing for people to invest in? Okay, so for me, those are my physical stores of value. Um, the next one I'm going to say is a bit controversial because people don't really understand it. I also store some of my money in Bitcoin. That's like my digital currency. Cryptocurrency. <laughs> That's like my digital store of value. Yeah. Because if you think about it, um, the money in our bank accounts is digital is digitalized anyway. Yes, yeah, you know just I mean? paper money. It's, it's, it's just, written in some it's, it's a written amount. If all of us today up and say, oh let's we all want go our to the money bank. <laughs> problems. <laughs> Big problems. So for me, um, that's my digital store of value because mm. again Bitcoin is very accept it's not you can't go to the shop and buy stuff with Bitcoin mm. and stuff but loads of people have sold their houses for Bitcoin yeah. you can buy gold and silver with Bitcoin you know it's slowly gaining adoption mm. um, because what we need to understand we have the power we allocate the value to things we've been conditioned to think that the pound note is is what it is because it, it is what it is but if we switch our consensus and say you know what I believe in this form of money that would be what takes that, that would be what they have to take they, there's 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 no other option because we they work hard to get our energy to get our to get us to value things mm. if we take our power back and then start valuing things that we believe in then ah that's a word there take the power back take the power back man. I think even in our finances I think the key thing in that I'm learning and hearing in all what we're seeing it's taking your power back as to where you are allocating funds, mm -hmm. why you're allocating the things in those ways, um, because you want to get an outcome or an output from what you're allocating it to. Mm -hmm. So Bitcoin, why do you say it's controversial? Like what makes it so what what brings makes people feel like mm, it's, just a, it's, just, it. it's just a lack of education. People just yeah. don't really understand it. So if because um, there's a common saying that if everyone knew how the banking system really works, there'd be a revolution tomorrow. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Bitcoin is the only deflationary currency in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's run on a, on, on a network. The network runs itself. It's just all done by coding, you know, it's mm -hmm. just a sequence of, you know what we, what we learned in school, that Y equals X. That's yeah. just been incorporated what, yeah. into Bitcoin, basically. Yeah. We just don't know it. There's a maths behind Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's got a fixed supply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, that supply, that supply um, coming onto the market gets cut every roughly every four years yeah but it's every 210,000 blocks so what Bitcoin does is it um the, the, the currency set at the 21 millions are fixed fixed bitcoins and then yeah. the computing network mines those bitcoins onto the network so every 10 minutes new bitcoins are coming onto the market okay so what happens is every four years every 210,000 blocks roughly that supply of new bitcoins coming onto the market gets cut in half so you have this so you have this deflationary currency that cuts its supply mm. every four years versus uh, the pound currency, the euro, the dollar, which is inflating its supply consistently. consistently. So for me, it's a no-brainer. And that's why if you look at how much Bitcoins you could get with one pound a couple of years ago that's versus what you, what you can get now, yeah. it's showing it's absolutely killing it. Do you know what I mean? So, but people just don't understand it. because So we know, need to go and read about yeah. Bitcoin, read about learn Bitcoin. about it, and get some ourselves more, some more. Hit me up on Instagram, you know, Sterling's Financial Solutions. He's the man. <laughs> um, Twitter, Sterling's Finance. Um, that's S-T-E-R-L-I-N-G-S-F-I-N-A-N-C. -S -S so Twitter didn't let me get a <laughs> handle on that. So yeah. Um, just as long as you could do it. <laughs> hit me up on that, you know, I'll teach I'm going to put everything in the description box below because yeah. I think that if we're learning that, okay, we're going to potentially invest in some hard currencies such as gold, silver, and bitcoins can actually do some stuff in terms of our saving. Mm -hmm. So we're not just saving in, our, in pounds, yeah. we're saving in that as well. That sounds like a no-brainer. Yeah, definitely a no-brainer, man. I mean, like, why, why people don't really want to invest in bitcoins? Because 
Uncertainty is what I usually uncertainty, find Uncertainty, yes. And then, you know, the whole narrative of it being a scam has been pushed out of there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been used... You know, there was an incident the other day where um, some Twitter handles, verified accounts were hacked and people were asking for Bitcoin. So they were saying, oh, if you send me Bitcoin, I'll double your money for you. So, you know, oh, things wow. like that don't really help the space. No, but if you look it. at it, if someone kidnaps you and they ask for diamonds or they ask for pounds, you don't blame the pound currency. Or the, or the diamond diamonds. industry. <laughs> you blame the kidnapper. Yeah. You know? yeah. The fact yeah. that the person wanted Bitcoin shows how valuable it is. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's a... It can be used for good and bad, but everything is used for good and bad. You know, yeah. Diamonds are used for good and bad, the yeah. pounds are used for good and bad. So, yeah. you know, it's just because it's such a threat to the banking system, it's mm. obviously. I think mean, that is that painting it black kind yes, of thing, exactly, as you said, yeah. because of the threat to the financial system. Mm. That's a revolution they don't want to happen, yeah. okay? <laughs> it's, like, it's like a peaceful resolution, mm. a peaceful revolution, like a yeah. peaceful protest. Like, okay, I'm not enabling you guys anymore. I'm taking my money out of my bank account. Take I'm only leaving enough to pay my bills, and I'm putting it into. Some, some hard money that is going to mm. appreciate over time and mm. increase my purchasing power mm. so I'm able to then buy more goods and services with more money versus me keeping my money in the financial system and having and limited having, and having, increments basically and having to buy and over time being able to buy less goods and services yeah, with more money. The same money there was a saying by this guy called Peter Schiff um, I watch his podcast uh, yeah I think it's called Schiff Radio it's on Schiff Radio I watch it on YouTube anyway but he's got a show called Schiff Radio and he says, when the government takes your money through inflation, mm. um, you have no idea why you're poorer, but you're just poorer. You know what I mean? You just, <laughs> you, you just, you just see, well, whoa, my money's not stretching as far anymore. You used to, you, yeah. But you have no idea why. And I think that what happens is what? Because in, in the HR industry, when you're doing increments in people's salary, mm -hmm. you're using that whole inflation rate as your base thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you might get 8% increase for the year, but in actuality, you're only getting 1% increment. Sometimes you're even losing money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the, the CPI inflation is manipulated as well. It's, of not course. The real, it's not the real rate of inflation. All right, so follow. So besides um, the hard currencies in terms of the gold and silver and bitcoins, what would be another thing that we can invest in? Um, I would say land is a good one as well. Okay, so is that land in terms of property or actual uh, like physical land? No, actual land because if you look at it, there's no, we can't make any more land. Do you know what I mean? The world's as big as it's going to get. As it is, okay. Do you know what I mean? The world's not going to get any bigger. Mm -hmm. So you have some land. Um, you've got some wealth outside of the financial system. Um, so land has its own standalone value at the end yeah. of the day, do you know what I mean? So no matter what happens with your stocks and your shares, your currencies, you've got a piece, you've got some minerals. Like, a piece of I mean? the earth the belongs piece of the to earth, you. Do you know what I mean? Like, so no matter what happens, you can charge whatever you want. Do you know what I mean? Um, if you don't want to sell it, hold on to it, uh, pass it on, you know. It's so where, where, where can people buy this land? Mm. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm an advocate for buying land back home in Africa because... Um, Growing Africa's, economies. Yeah, grow, emerging economy. It's mm -hmm. an untapped... Uh, there's, do you know what I mean? The market hasn't m matured over there. Do you know what I mean? There's so Fair much enough. more development to go on over in Africa. Mm -hmm. The land's as cheap as it's going to get now. Um, you <laughs> Definitely. Know, like, with, with inflation, you know, inflation is good for things that, you know, we need. Yeah. So, like, minerals. Do you know what I mean? Inflation carries minerals along with, with, um, with it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, land's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay, so someone that's not African, mm. you're saying that and buy land in Africa, how would they go about getting acquired land in Africa or outside? Are there other places that you would definitely, like, say? Is it similar that? to having, like, a freehold? Is, is it something uh, like that? Like, to have, you own the freehold, it's your, you own the land that property Yeah, I, I guess so, to be honest, yeah. Um, yeah, because, yeah, you actually own the land when you have a freehold, don't yeah. you, isn't it? Yeah, so, um, that's a good one. People actually um, buy freeholds oh, for yeah, property freeholds for people, consistently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then charge you, like, three grand for service charge, but, and they did yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. for the whole year. Yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> but I'm talking about, like, buying land, like, you know, um, in Africa. You'd have to go through, like, some reputable companies at the end of the day, because, <laughs> you know, a lot of you know scams happen mm -hmm. are there any people that you can recommend for anyone with that maybe has resources to buy land in africa um not at the moment i've sort of just gone through family um Fair enough. there are some good reputable companies um so do your research basically yeah, do your research. i can't i can't recommend mm -hmm. any at this moment in time but i know there is some okay for someone so you... that something someone that does want to get involved yeah and hasn't got the connections and the ties 
they will definitely need to, you know, to use a company. company yeah. They don't just go online exactly. and yeah, just yeah. click on the first one you see. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. Well, you know the property thing. You know you said property is different to land. Do you want to go into why property is a good or a bad thing, and maybe it's a good thing, but not for right now. Um, so property is a good thing. It's another way of passing on generational wealth. Yeah. You know what I mean, um, the thing for me is property right now, especially in London, is overvalued. I mean, people have been paying you know four hundred, five hundred thousand pounds for like for box pieces. Yeah. Bl- bl- the square foot you're getting is just a box in the sky. It's <laughs> a box you know in the sky. I like no, that. No offense to anyone as well. Do you know what I mean? But it's just it's just obviously not sustainable at the end of the day because first of all, uh, people's incomes are not going up. Um, at the rate in the same rate yeah yeah so definitely the average person can't even afford this home they're having to go f- to get these homes through these schemes like mm-hmm. help to buy and, and what do you think about those actually not for me but if you need uh, <laughs> not for me if you can avoid it avoid it because again you don't have to go on the high street to get a property you can go to a broker that will be able to offer you like so much that isn't available to everybody yeah Personally, uh, I wouldn't. Yeah, for me, I wouldn't either. To be fair, for me, you're leaving yourself very, very vulnerable. Um, yeah, you're very financially vulnerable because if your house goes into negative equity, if we see the property tank that oh. the tank in the market, that's very likely to, to happen with COVID. Definitely, yeah, um, you could find yourself in a bit of a pickle. Do you know what I mean? Because, Especially if you're looking to sell. Like I know people yeah. that are maybe looking to sell because they had a five-year plan. Yeah, but now they can't sell because their property is in negative equity. So yeah. they have to wait out. They have to wait out unless you're going to pay back. The, the windfall exactly. Exactly, you know what I mean and um, properties aren't that easy to liquidate at the end no. of the day no yeah. I actually um, was watching I think it's called it's Trampa and um, the guy literally did the thing where people bought raffles in order to get rid of a property oh, yeah, he had in Mitchum yeah. mm-hmm. kind of thing I bought a few vouchers and never won <laughs> so but it, it, it was the case of I think it was, he was trying to sell it for a while and then obviously came up with that that's actually very popular in America and it's probably a good way. He said he's going to be doing a few more in the coming years. So yeah. if you guys want to jump on that, definitely do. It's two pounds for a ticket. You yeah. could potentially win a house. Why mm-hmm. not? Mm-hmm. But you still have to, you have to fix your finances regardless. Yeah. <laughs> don't just don't just wish on the stars. Don't, <laughs> don't take the trip. <laughs> no, definitely. So we've got the things of um, uh, we've got liquid um, some hard cash. Uh, we've got Bitcoin, so cryptocurrency. We've got land. Mm-hmm. Potentially property, but more land than property. Property. Is there anything else? Like, there's the one I've been waiting for you to say, but I'm not hearing it just yet. Maybe you're not a big advocate of the stock market. Stock market. market. <laughs> stock market. Oh, where do I begin? Um, okay, so my personal views on the stock market. Same thing with the property market. It's overvalued. You've got this huge disconnection mm. um, where the market this year, like no one can say that the markets have been acting rationally. Everyone knows. I mean, we had Hertz go bankrupt. Their stock soared. That would that um, didn't even make any sense to me. There. Look at the Tesla chart. It's going yeah, up in like nice. a in an elevator. It's just going straight. I mean, when when do asset prices go up in an elevator? Like, do you know? What it I mean? doesn't make it's sense. It's supposed to go up in like an escalator, mm-hmm. a sort of like mm-hmm. a. Do you know what I mean? So you know, you're gonna have to strap on your seatbelt for that one because because it's you. <laughs> oh, it's gonna crash. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know, innit? I mean, it could continue going on forever, but I've never seen a graph, like, literally, like... Just get... Mm, like, you know what I mean? So, take some caution with that. Um, but Tesla's a good company, you know. Um, but it's weird because their sales declined. Their sales I know, but again, I, I was thinking of the fact that they're affiliated to other companies. So I think a lot of people, would, when they make investment um, choices, they look at conglomerates because they have affiliations to other things. So if... Essentially, Tesla itself is going down. Are the other um, associate bodies, associate companies doing well where they could actually bail it out in that sense? Is there money, is there money, capital able to go back into that company? I think that definitely plays a big role in investments. And from my um, experience, those are the kind of things people always tell you to look out for when mm. you are investing in the stock market. But trust me, the stock market has the ability to burn you yeah. or grow you. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's just, I think it's overvalued. I mean, I, I, I don't mind the stock market. I just feel like, if you really like stocks, yeah, you can invest your money elsewhere, wait for the inevitable correction, because at the end of the day, it's very obvious what's happening. I mean, we've had the Federal Reserve, that's a central bank in America, mm-hmm. create so much money that mm-hmm. it's, it's flowing into the market because they're giving their friends on Wall Street. Of course. And, you know, they're giving them most of the money. <laughs> and what are they going to do? They're going to try and keep this bubble that carries the bubble into the bubble. 
But One the bubble is going to eventually... Bubbles have it's to good. pop. There, yeah. it, there's no other solution. You've never seen a bubble stay inflated forever. Forever. I mean, so <laughs> That's true. For me, if you really do like the stock market, keep your eye on it. Um, invest your money elsewhere. Um, when it does have that correction, there's some things... It's all about rebalancing your portfolio. But what, the thing with people is that they just invest and they just leave it. Like to just do this thing. Sometimes you've got to swap in and out of assets. You know yeah, but I mean? in, in stock market, it's not better to look at it as more of a long-term kind of thing. I, think so. I was definitely about to come to that. Mm. I wouldn't be putting any money into the market that I wouldn't want to see for the, uh, that I'm going to need within the next 10 or 20 years. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, but at the end of the day, because you, I see loads of these tweets and memes that oh, if you put £50 pounds for the rest of, for 50 years, you'd have X amount of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't do, necessarily you, follow that. Yeah, it doesn't. Straight math, first, mathematical. First of all, they always put the disclaimer, you may get less than yeah, you. Yeah, 100%. You really and by that, what they mean is the rate of inflation. By the time you get this £50,000 or this £100,000 after you've been investing... It may be like only years, worth like 20 grand. It's not going to be worth the same. So they're basically telling you, we're going to give you back this money. It may be less than what you put in. Yeah. It might not be less than what you put in. Like in It's always in small prints as well. It's always in a small print. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's definitely a long-term game. Um, I just think that... You, you want to get rich in... We all want to be rich in the next 30, 40, 50 years. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. But you need to have long-term plans and so short-term having short-term plans, plans long-term yeah, you can't stuff. Be, who wants to? I don't want to wait fifty years before, before I, I can have money. money. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be. Uh, You'll be able to enjoy the money. <laughs> exactly. So you have to have. You have to say for you. We, we all want to believe that you know. Some people say life is short, but let's just say life's long. Like we're probably gonna have to live with the decisions that we make for a very long time on average. We don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you have to have a long-term plan yeah. and a short-term plan. Yeah. You know I mean? So you have to save like you're gonna have a long life. So invest your money into things that are gonna- But also save like you're gonna live for- But also have, it's the you balance. Know, have some short-term balance in some businesses that are generating new cash flow, some cash producing assets. Um, yeah, and you can't so you wrong. mentioned cash flow. Mm. So again, so now the, the, the clear thing is when you're investing, you have to have a long term and a short term strategy mm-hmm. and be open to it changing consistently based yes. on what the market is saying. Yes. Cash flow. Why is that important? Cash flow is important because you always need to have income coming in. And why I say that is money's a very, very, very it's, money's just a tool. Mm. Just a tool, and okay. you're supposed to use it to get what you want to, what you, what you want to, what you want to do. Yeah. You're supposed to use it for things that you need to use it for. Yeah. So, uh, one thing COVID has taught is that we need different streams of income. Hundred percent. Like the average millionaire has. Did you hear that? <laughs> the average millionaire has seven different incomes. Mm. I mean, a lot of people have made their um, fortunes from you know just the one grind or the one hustle. Yeah. But even eventually, them it's they, they diversify. Have to, they have to diversify. Yeah. You have to. So I just feel like with the stock market, a lot of people have gone all into it because they've and seen it like crash. They've seen it crash, and they're like, "Yeah, this has to go back up." Yeah, it's mm. gonna, the stock market goes up forever. So the narrative has been created that you know, as long as you're in the stock market for long enough, it's gonna go up forever. So everyone's fixated on on, on, on that the stock alone. market when there's, you know, some, some some other assets you can acquire. You can. You now people don't even know the terms correction, pullback. Do you know? Do you know? They just know P slash Put Eurasia. money there. Just put they, money there and just let it happen. They don't know that you know that stocks go from undervalued to overvalued. overvalued so yeah. just so something is cheaper than it yeah. was a few months ago, it doesn't mean it's undervalued. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's still some stocks are still overvalued. But yeah, this goes back to the whole idea of financial literacy again. Yeah, exactly, the fact yeah. that if you don't know what you're doing, a lot of the times I always say to people, if you don't read into the stock, if you're not going to be consistently on the news. Um, reading about the companies that you're investing in, I wouldn't bother do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's Definitely. the advice I always give. Would you? Would you? you have, would you adhere to that yeah, advice? You have, you have to understand what you're investing in. 100%. At the end of the day, I mean, it's your money. You just don't give someone your money um, and just say, "Okay, I'll let you." We'll see what happens. Yeah. But I think we do that with our money, though. We do. <laughs> we do that genuinely our money, and just see. It. When you said we, you don't budget, and actually, let's go into the budgeting thing, yeah. because now we talked about investing our money, saving our money. But you, what you just said, like you just give your money and just what would happen when you don't have a budget. That's almost what you do. And Nanny spoke about structure earlier on. If you don't have that structure, it's almost like you're giving your money. And you don't know what's going on, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll, I'll be honest, that was me in the beginning, five years ago. Me too! Five everyone, years ago when everyone. I didn't know what I was doing. I just read a couple of books. I read, I read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy and that changed my life. I thought, yes, I'm going to start investing. And I invested in the stock market. And I didn't know what I was doing. Most of my money was sitting in cash. So I was like, I'm clearly doing something wrong. And it's only like through rereading stuff, talking to people and putting myself in arenas that I would ne not necessarily be around. That's when I'm starting to learn all these things. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. I do need to check my investments. I can't just do this and just, and just hope, for, yeah, hope, hope for the best. For the best. Like, and 100%. Watch the news and read yeah. the papers. So yeah. it's important. Yeah. So, okay. Now we've talked about the things we can do with our money. So how do we then budget ourselves because you talked about the ratio like the 50 30 20 ratio mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily work for everyone so now we, we have our income we know our income as you said how do we then allocate the stuff how should we do it you talked about apps that people use uh -huh. i'm a spreadsheet baby you're a yeah. spreadsheet baby. follow your spreadsheet yeah, yeah we I'm spreadsheet people over here <laughs> So how would you take, how would you advise someone to tackle budgeting? Like what is the budgeting 101 in order to get yourself straight? For me, I say 101 automation, because that if you it. leave it in your hands and you manually be like, yeah, when I get paid, I'm going to put X amount of money here, here, here. The likeliness of you doing it or forgetting to do it is very, very big. So <laughs> what you need to do is automate. Mm. Like, again, pay yourself first. Automate that payment. As soon as the money drops in your account, you'll have either um, a standing order or a... Um, there's different ones. So there's standard orders. You don't. You can't use a direct debit. No, not um, for yourself. No. What's it? Um, there's a name. Money box, like a direct. You can do a direct deposit. So yes. That's so it. if you have these things set up, they go out on the day you get paid. That way, you're not having to worry about it. That's what you mm. need to do first. Mm. What do you think about, because in terms of the budget, I know loads of people are talking about having multiple accounts where different things go in, mm -hmm. different things come out. Mm -hmm. How do you think, does that actually really help? It or helps me. Again, it's all personal. For me, I've got like five different accounts that do five different things. So money comes into one, money goes out into one, which is for bills. Mm -hmm. Another one might be emergency fund. Another one might be long-term savings. Another one might be short-term savings. But that works for me because mm -hmm. I don't like having my money in the same place. Mm -hmm. I like money to be around me. I hold on to cash as well. I used to like to see one big lump sum to feel like, yes, I'm working hard for a reason. Yeah. But that can be very tempting when it you see a bag course. and you're like, well, you know, the they money. said that if you could buy it, buy it three times, you can afford it. I can afford it. But you're like, no, 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 no. Have your money in separate places because the thing is, when you've got loads of money in one pot, the thing is, oh. Have a spending account if, if that's the case. Yeah. So allocate money for your spending. Yeah. So this is my money that I can use to either go out to eat, go out to brunches, day parties, you name it, that's your account. Yeah. Once that money hits its low, that's it. Yeah, a lot of people use their Monzo and Sterling accounts for that, to be and fair. That's good. Like, so if you just use those, use the Monzo and that just I mean, you know that, that uh, I've, I've reached my spending yeah, limit. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I've reached my quota for the month. I'm good. Coming up next on the Money Matters series. So, while we're on the relationship talks, how important is money in relationships? Yeah, it's very important, very man. Important, like, it's... it's <laughs> you got to zoom. You've got to zoom. You need to zoom into her face. Very important, guys. Very important. <laughs>